We live in a superstitious society. So even when we hear terrible stories of people losing their jobs, women suddenly losing the breadwinners of their households and being forced into relative pennilessness, we think, God forbid, not me. But sometimes bad things happen to good people. Episode 3 opens with this voiceover with a view of what I'm guessing is Lagos at night in the background. Quote, we live in a superstitious society, so even when we hear terrible stories of people losing their jobs, women suddenly losing the breadwinners of their households and being forced into relative penniless, we think, God forbid, not me. But sometimes, bad things happen to good people. Why call it pennilessness and not poverty? People are forced into poverty when breadwinners die. What with the reluctance to say poverty? This show will do everything it can to avoid engaging with poverty. And then there's that ridiculous closing line about how bad things sometimes happen to good people. Sometimes? Sometimes? Dude, I think we can agree that bad things almost exclusively happen to good people. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. This episode is about surviving emergencies, aka the bad things that happen to people. Zuri's mom's house caught fire and some part burned down, but no one got hurt, which is great. Her mom suffered smoke inhalation, and when they couldn't get Zuri on the phone, they called her brother, who's overseas, who sent money for oxygen. The way that woman says her brother sent the money, it's almost like a criticism of Zuri. Now Zuri feels bad because she has nothing to contribute. There's something really fucked up about a society in which the only way you can contribute is financially. And if you can't, you must feel terrible about it. Now, maybe it makes sense in Zuri's case because the reason she's unable to contribute is because she's been squandering her money. The problem is the millions watching this show are not Zuri. They're just poor people being shamed for being poor, for being the kind of people who would not have money to contribute in that situation. The types that don't have emergency money ready for when hell breaks loose. It's interesting to me how the implicit criticism is of Zuri, but not this fucked up capitalist society and the for profit healthcare system. The focus is on Zuri and not the fact that you have to pay for oxygen. Oxygen! Um, can I speak to my mom, please? I, I mean, I'll come over as soon as I can. No, I'll come tomorrow. Come where? It's tomorrow, not Monday. You want to leave your work and come and see a woman that has small scratch. I appreciate it, Auntie. Anyway, Zuri wants to go see her mom, but is discouraged from going because it's due tomorrow is Monday, a work day, that she should not miss. What is with this film's capitalist propaganda about work ethic? Of course you should take time off work and immediately go see her mom. There should be no discussion about it, not even seeking permission. Her mother could have died. So what she is in her? She could have been. That's all that matters. She's fine. That's enough cause for celebration. Enough reason for Zuri to go see her. Plus, Zuri is neither a doctor nor a paramedic nor a nurse. No one will die because she missed work. Capitalist propaganda on work ethic has us really overestimating the value of our jobs and underestimating everything else. Resignations and dismissals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's everybody? We have a lot of work to do. Good morning. Pakamba, where's everybody? Good morning. Good morning. My tailors, where are they? Uh-huh. Why are people standing there when we have so many orders to fill? Gloria, those dresses from yesterday. I hope you finish cutting them. Mm. No. <laughs> you people. You people should not let me fight you. Because you know that this is the busiest we've been in months. That dress I made for Toke has brought us big business. Why are you move? Why are you people staring at me? What is this? Eh, hey, madam, we have something to tell you. We are resigned. You, you have what? Madam Tammy, 
We really appreciate everything you do for us so, in training and in work. But we want to go and do an type of work. But thank you, Sha. Thank, thank you very much. What the hell is this? My God, this is if we want to keep. So, so what is going to happen to all the deliveries we have this week? We have 86 deliveries. Did you guys just pay salaries like, like three days ago? The exploitation and precarity of workers. It's worth keeping in mind that the show is about these upper class women who are well known enough for blogs to gossip about them. The thing is though, what it purports to teach about money isn't limited to that social class. It may use those upper class characters, but it's also talking in wide sweeping generalizations about money and how we should relate with it. From budgeting to tracking expenses, investments, and work ethic, etc. This is why it deserves every criticism from every class. Moving on. Tommy walks into the job all riled up, talking disrespectfully to the tailors who work for him. I'm already like, fuck her, even before I know what's going on. Why are you yelling at us, bitch? The tailors tell her they're resigning en masse. And friends, if I could have, I would have jumped for joy. Tim is asking the tailors what they're going to do about all the deliveries now that they're working out. And I'm like, Viva, babe, that's your problem. That's a you problem if I ever saw one. You want me to be out here worrying about the orders for your business whose profits are yours and all the glory is yours as if we're equal partners? Nah, bitch. We isn't equal partners. You show no loyalty towards me. I show no loyalty towards your ass. Bye for this shit. Isn't this why businesses say they underpay workers and overpay themselves because the entrepreneur is taking on the risks? Yeah, this is what risk looks like, madam entrepreneur. Tammy is nuts and so disrespectful to her employees. When people say they're quitting in mass, the question to ask them is why? Not yell and throw a tantrum. How she talks to her workers, but even I would quit. Also, can we talk about the stress of working at a one-man show with one boss? The stress, the precarity, the indignities you're forced to suffer through as you're tossed about based on their every win. If you've never had this experience, count yourself lucky. They talk to you the way Tammy talks to those employees, but because you need the job, literally, to stay alive, you stand there and keep your face neutral and reply politely. Also, Dear smart man and woman, it's within workers' rights to leave when they want. You don't get to demonize them. Fuck you. You're not doing them a favor. If anything, they're doing you a favor. Growing your brand with you taking all the glory. Shit alcohol. You had it coming. Me? I feel nothing for it. Huh. And what is that other employee worrying about? Talking about what will we do about the orders? Hey, babe, it's not your business. That girl will drop you without a second thought if she has to. Heck, even if she doesn't have to, just on a fucking whip. That employee, Makamba, is what we call a class treater. They're siding with a capitalist instead of a fellow workers working out. Like, no one's asking you to walk out with them. Just get your entire face out of the boss's asshole, Big Misha. Tammy recovers quickly, hiring other tailors to handle the orders. Only problem is, the new tailors don't do a good job and she gets massacred online. A customer even returns the clothes to the shop and reads her the riot act. I'm like, bitch, why didn't you supervise? Like, you only have one fucking job. One job. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel sorry for her. Not even a little bit. Fuck all the capitalists, big and small. I have zero solidarity with them. Anyway, her friends come in and help her, whatever, I don't care. I just love that the show inadvertently shows us how capitalists make money by exploiting the labor of others. The show clearly demonstrates that it is workers who create value, not capitalists. When the tailors leave, everything grinds to a halt. Tammy is forced to hire new tailors to exploit. Tailors who she gets from a middleman, an agency which means they're likely being doubly exploited. After the new tailors come, 
work can resume because it is the tailors who create value, who make the wealth. Tell me there's nothing, not even supervised. And you want to tell us how entrepreneurs are the ones making the money? Fuck out of here. Anyway, excellent on goal there, Tim. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, tension is rising at Zuru's office where all the workers just got an email alerting them about the company-wide meeting. Someone tells Zuri it means people are getting fired. Apparently, the last time this happened was just after Zuri joined the firm. The big meeting happens, and as predicted, people are fired. Here's what's interesting. When Tammy's tailors quit, they were framed as frivolous and unthinking, low-income, low-skilled workers. Zuri's firm fires people, and it's made to look like a well-thought-out business decision necessary for the survival of the company. Okay. Okay. I guess this is one of those smart when rich people do it and stupid when people do things. So rich people can fire people at will, but workers cannot quit at will. Okay. Noted. Also, why are they being fired so publicly? Everyone is called into the boardroom, then the names of those who have been fired are read out. What? They can just tell them personally? The indignities workers are subjected to. Something terrible is happening to you. They are doing something terrible to you. But the boss is like, hmm, how can we make this worse? Yes, let's do it in a public setting so that everyone sees you at your lowest point. It's like that thing Lewis did on Suits when he made someone pretend to be an associate, then fired the figure in front of all the new associates to scare them. It worked. Except this situation is worse because there's no play acting. You're exploiting someone's real pain for your bullshit ends. This is some bullshit. Fuck Zuri's bitches boss. Fuck the man. Fuck corporations. All workers should give companies zero loyalty. Also that meeting should have been an email. It's interesting how in Zuri's case she's encouraged to be loyal to the company to work hard and really put in the work, but the company isn't loyal to employees. Something happens in Tammy's case. The employees are framed as disloyal, with the exception of Makamba, who stays. But Tammy isn't loyal to them either. They're just replaceable tailors. It's random aside. It's worth remembering that she considers the word tailor something beneath her. She is a designer. It is her workers who are tailors. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh. Baba, don't cry. Everything's gonna be okay. I'm sure something better will come. Something better how? Hmm? Zuri, something better how? Because it took me over one year of searching to find this job. Over one year of walking through the streets of Lagos in the name of interviews until my shoes were out of shape. I, I, I know. You do? Really? Because without my salary, my family is in trouble. I'm my family's breadwinner. I don't expect you to understand. You with your happy-go-lucky I schooled abroad so I can coast attitude. Why did you say that? Because I work my ass off. I get here early. I leave late. And you get to stay. You. How? How, how is that fair? One of the girls was fired, ugly cries, and it's like, yep. That's how you cry when your life is crumbling with your lungs. The girl says without her salary, her family is in trouble. Going by the swamp stasis that broke means you can't afford your current lifestyle if you lose your job. Is that fired girl broke or poor? The fat girl says she works hard, gets to the office early and leaves late and compares herself to Zuri who's called a board and just hosts on that. Now I'm does the film want us to believe that working hard is where it's at? Or that even if you work hard, you can still get fired? I'm confused. Because this here girl did everything you're supposed to do in terms of work ethic. Came in early, stayed late, worked hard, yet she got fired. Then we have Zuri, who's called abroad, looks and sounds like it, 
but doesn't do any of that and she didn't get fired. Capitalism with its different strokes for different folks at us. Wow. This show is everything. While the fat girl is crying, inconsolable in the hallway, this monologue plays. A smart woman doesn't wait for financial surprises. She systematically saves towards her emergency fund because she knows that this is the foundation of her financial journey. While she's having a breakdown, quote, a smart woman does not wait for financial surprises. She systematically saves towards her emergency fund because she knows that this is the foundation of her financial journey. While she's crying, they tell us she's not a smart money woman because she didn't prepare for this kind of emergency. This woman who was supporting her family with her single income and she looks like a secretary or something, this woman is not a smart money woman because she wasn't prepared for this kind of emergency. Okay, <laughs> okay. You hate poor people. You are against people supporting their families. You're assholes. Volunteer to come and babysit SJ uh -huh. once or twice a oh, week. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, Sergi? Uh -huh. Oh, he's fine. He's very happy for me. You know, he's very supportive. Just that, you know, as a married woman, I'm not going to fail any of my duties. My husband is very important and he mustn't suffer. Oh. I really dream of the day it's men having these types of conversations. Oh. Me too. Anyway. Adesua. I think men be too stupid. The girls meet Adesua, the lawyer with a deadbeat husband, to celebrate her recent promotion. She lies to her friends talking about how her husband is supportive of her. No one buys that nonsense. She says of her new working hours, My husband is very important and he mustn't suffer. Jesus Christ. That's what brain rot sounds like. This other sore woman is nuts. She's fucking certifiable. She named her kid SG, as in Soji Jr. I ain't never heard this level of bullshit. You named your kid after a deadbeat. And don't nobody say maybe he wasn't a deadbeat before. Once a deadbeat, always a deadbeat. She's literally out here getting her friends to promise to babysit SG because of her new working hours, like she doesn't have a husband, like SG doesn't have a father. Married single mothers with big money, they make you sad and they piss you the fuck off. The way she makes excuses for that deadbeat Suji, it's obvious that's not some new shit that's just recently surprising her. She has tons of experience covering for him. Okay, I guess the argument could be made that it's new and she's covering for him out of but no, it doesn't ring true having seen her husband. He's trash, personified, incarnate. I love how none of her friends believe her so GPR campaign. Do you know what this reminds me of? Mm -hmm. 
my annoying little brother. Mm -hmm. I told you guys that he feels so entitled to my money. Really? Do you know how many millions are spent on this boy's education? Mm -hmm. you, you, you have no idea how much just for him to come and say that he wants to become this one. What? $15. <laughs> <laughs> At 22, he wants to drop out of school after all of the money I've spent. Well done. To become a footballer, imagine how much. Can you imagine? Lyra and her stupid brother. Lyra tells her friend about her brother deciding to quit school to play football. When telling her friends about her brother, she talks about how many millions she spent and how he wants to drop out after all that money. It's just sad to me that it's about the money. A good faith argument for her one choice would be people try to speak about things they can quantify, like money. Effort is so abstract for example. But the shoes about money, and this sister's concern is about the money she has spent. What money does to people and relationships is, 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 just, is just terrible. Now she can't see beyond or speak beyond money to things like her fear that he's ruining his life, wasting a great opportunity to learn and advance himself to the city. All she sees is the money she spent. It's just sad what money does to relationships. It feels like I wasted money on this stupid kid. And that's what's sad to me because it's one thing to say, I have done so much for you, I cannot believe you're not seeing it. I cannot believe you want to throw away your life like this. I can't believe you don't appreciate this effort. It's one thing to say that and another to just be like, dude, I've wasted so much money on you. Like, I don't know. Maybe money is a stand-in for effort and, and, and like everything you've done to help them. But still, I don't know. Bringing it down to money is just, it's, it's very cold. It's very cold. Okay, then I have some pointers for you. So basically, I've had to learn to put away some money every month. Think of it as a rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. So this money is completely separate from my bills and my savings. Okay. Yeah. So every year for the last two years, I've been putting just a little away every month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have to be very deliberate about that. Yes. Deliberate and intentional. Not uh, when I have money, I'll put something there. You have to be on it, on it, on it, on it. Yeah, what they said. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Look, an emergency cannot catch me. On a wet. Have a job. Oh, yeah. Rainy day fund. Zuri tells a friend about the emergency with her mom. And Lara and Edisor, the financially responsible ones, teach her about starting a rainy day fund. They make this thing sound like they're profound, when it's just shit everyone knows. Everyone knows the importance of a rainy day fund. If they're not doing it, it's because they're not disciplined enough to follow through, or their finances don't allow it. Otherwise, people know about sacrifices. Zuri finds someone to sell her designer stuff so that she can get some cash. I must have no taste, because those designer bags look ugly to me. Here's the monologue while she's doing that. Sometimes, taking control of your money means making short-term sacrifices to achieve long-term gain. The plan is usually easy, but the execution can be challenging. It requires small, sustainable changes in our lifestyle choices that add up over time. Quote, Sometimes, taking control of your money means taking short-term sacrifices to achieve long-term gain. The plan is usually easy, but the execution can be challenging. It requires small sustainable changes in our lifestyle choices that add up over time. End. Okay, I have no problem with this one. The next voiceover is... Your bank statement should reflect your values and your goals. Make sure the money you are earning is going in the direction you intended, not in the direction your friends, your family, or society are dragging you in. But your bank statement should reflect your values and your goals. Make sure the money you're earning is going in the direction you intended, not in the direction your friends, your family, or society are driving you in. And 
during this week, we see Zoe's progress, how she sells her designer stuff, how she does her facial at home and not at some expensive spa, how she cancels her expensive gym membership, and works out with her friends at Edisua's house, how she still hasn't gone to see her mother who could have died in a fire because of her newly found stellar work ethic. Progress all around. Deal? Deal. High five. Good boy. Okay, so let's go to shower time. Ladies, it's time to shower. Mm -hmm. Please be comfortable. There's wine, there's food. I'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go shower. <sighs> Man, oh. I just want to try a shower. I wonder whether her husband is. On a public holiday. Mm, that's my own. Mm, maybe he's out working, you know, trying to catch a deal or something. Yes, that is probably what he's doing. Mm. No, please. <laughs> oh. oh my God, sorry. <laughs> Fuck. Back to the So embarrassing. To get on them. I hate all the sins with that is was baby. They suck. That baby can't act and her family life just sucks. I don't want to see it. I really don't. Adiswa goes to give her kid a shower and Zuri and Lara remain talking very openly about her trash husband Suji. It's really interesting how her friends know her husband is trash but none of them say anything and I get it. There would be no reason to tell someone like Adesua anything. That level of self-deception is undefeated. No amount of talking to her would help. Next thing we see is Soji in a club with the boys and some girl. I'm thinking about how those men out with the cheating Soji likely knew his wife. Men are trash. Trash. You're a great mother. You'll see the fruits of your labor. Abi? And at least you're working for his future. The nest egg that you're building is so he can be comfortable. I wish all of us could say the same. Family again? Girl. I work so hard and the money does come in. But the way that my immediate and extended family bleed me dry in. If it's not hospital bills, it's school bills. If it's not school fees, it's Rent. If it's not rent, it's, oh, contributes for this family member. And, oh, contributes for this family event. I swear, if I hear one more, oh, I am going to lose it. When the end of the month comes around, I'm sitting here thinking, wait a minute. Who am I really working for? <laughs> My dear, all that is modern day slavery. Mm -hmm. See, I know the things that keep me enslaved. Gym memberships that I barely use. Designer bags. Mm -hmm. Weekly spa treatments, ladies, I am shedding them like snakes. Yeah. Well, you better Go. shed. Go, girl. Yes. <laughs> shed them. <down. clears throat> Adesua, mm -hmm. is it just me and Lara that have problems? Mm -hmm. How can? It's just that Soji and I have an excellent understanding. You guys know we have a joint account, which helps us stay accountable to each other. And nobody really makes any huge withdrawal without checking with the other person. Yeah. What's that? Um, it's just something from work. Lara tells the girls about how her family, immediate and extended, is bleeding her dry. Bleeding her dry. She says she works so hard, but they bleed her dry. How, Krita, are they bleeding her dry? Brace yourself. Medical bills, school fees, rent, family contributions. She says at the end of the month, she often wonders who she's working for. Then Zuri, in her infinite wisdom, says, quote, My dear, that is modern day slavery. My dear, all that is modern day slavery. Mm -hmm. It appears we're back to black tax. The problem with the way black tax is framed is it has no critique of the system, just a massive critique of suffering people who need our help. So these girls have nothing to say about how healthcare should be a right. No comment 
about how education should be accessible to all for free, how housing should not be subject to market forces because it's a human right. They have nothing to say about widespread poverty and lack that necessitates that families constantly contribute to endless things. Nothing. Zero comment about that. Just how her family bleeds her dry and has essentially enslaved her. We're supposed to feel sorry for a top executive in an oil firm who drives a luxury car, lives in an expensive house, and has a rainy day fund. This person, who also wears designer clothes and can afford expensive ashoy bees and days out with her girls, is who we should be sorry for. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I cannot bring myself to do that. How? I love Lara. Everyone knows she's my favorite right after Laden. But not even she can convince me to side with her on this one. We're supposed to see this woman as a slave to her family. And also Jesus Christ. Why are we so casually invoking slavery like this? Black tax is not modern day slavery. Helping your family is not modern day slavery. Living in a capitalist society that exploits you at every turn, maybe that's slavery. Y'all are being too casual with the word slavery. Way too casual. You know what slavery looks like? It looks like working for someone else without any personal freedom or ability to live or stop. It looks like gaining nothing for your labor. Any day that she wants to, Lara can stop supporting her family. Slaves can't choose to stop. Lara, doubtless, enjoys the fruits of her labor and chooses what to do with it. Slaves don't. There are modern day wage slaves. Lara is not one of them. Wage slaves are people who literally cannot survive in the absence of their wages. And their wages are so low as to only support keeping them alive to be able to do no work. Like you're literally paid enough just to stay alive. Enough to not die. Lara is not this. This bitch is rich. She's fucking rich. She's not a slave. She's not anybody's slave. Fuck this show for belittling actual wage slaves, actual people who are suffering and being exploited endlessly. Any day Lara wants to stop supporting her family, she can. Slaves do not have that fucking choice. Fuck this fucking show. My dear, all that is modern day slavery. Mm -hmm. See, I know the things that keep me enslaved. Gym memberships that I barely use, Designer bags, mm -hmm. weekly spa treatments, ladies. I am shedding them like snakes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you better so, shed. Go, girl. Yes. <laughs> shed them. Then Zuri, fuck her all the way to hell, gives her version of the things that keep her enslaved. So, true designer bags and weekly spa treatments. First of all, fuck all of you. Second of all, I want us to stop casually using the word slave. Then she says how she's shedding all those things that keep her enslaved like a snake sheds its skin. So I'm just wondering, is she suggesting that Lara stop helping her family and contributing to shit? Is that what she's saying? That then the fools around her support those damn sentiments. <laughs> I'm getting real pissed. We're getting to the end of the episode. It's fine. Lara and Zuri, after opening up about their problems, ask her to sue if they're the only ones with problems. Lara, of course, is awesome as ever, performance-wise, to be clear. Adesua, the leader of all the fools, says, quote, <clears throat> Adesua, mm -hmm. is it just me and Lara that have problems? Mm -hmm. How can? It's just that Soji and I have an excellent understanding. You guys know we have a joint account, which helps us stay accountable to each other. And nobody really makes any huge withdrawal without checking with the other person. Yeah. What's that? Um, it's just something from work. It's just Soji and I have an excellent understanding. You guys know we have a joint account which helps us to stay accountable to each other. And nobody really makes any huge withdrawals without checking with the other person. I felt chills when she said that. And felt in good company 
when her friends joined. I felt vindicated when she immediately got a text message letting her know that Suji had withdrawn a huge amount of cash. She's fucking nuts. She has a joint account with her loser husband, who she knows is a loser, because he isn't even doing that thing where he's incredibly sweet to you, but he's trash, so you're confused. He just full on picks loser daily and lives by it, and she still has a joint account with his fucking ass. You know what I cannot forgive her for? That is a liar. She's a liar. This is a person who has straight up told her friends that Suji is a major breadwinner. But you're lying. And you know you're lying. I cannot win this up to people. It's one thing to talk about patriarchy and misogyny and the way women internalize these oppressive views. But lying to your friends for a man? Come on. Now you're just a liar. Now you're just the kind of person that can't be trusted. I can't with lies. I have this theory about married women and spam. I don't know it for a fact. I just know it's true. <laughs> I think spam does something to you. Like it makes you dumb, just dumb. Why would you do this? Shit. This is why the body is always rejecting spam. Where they have to come in millions for a few to survive. Guys, wrap it up. Spam does something to you. It's dangerous out there. Is that my baby girl? <laughs> Suji, where are you coming from? Uh, what's now? We're hanging out with your friends just now. <laughs> In fact, I wasn't leaving. I went to hang out with my friends to stay crime. Hanging with your friends is not a crime, Suji, but this could be. Okay. That's a huge amount to withdraw without discussing it first. 217,000 Naira. What do you need it for? That is so I just told you I was hanging with the boys. Oh. Big deal. Ah. Wait, 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 wait. Six. You are saying that you spent 217,000 naira at once hanging with the boys. So you have discussed this now. We can't afford these expenditures, especially without agreeing on it first. <sighs> this one, please just calm down now. Relax. I just sealed the deal. Ah, relax. You just closed the deal? Yeah. Oh, babe. Well done. You should have said that. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Is it a positive conversation type of deal closing? What does that mean? I just want to tell me, what is that supposed to mean? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, we've been down this road before several times. One minute, the deal is there. The next minute, something goes wrong. You know, I just want, if there's something that you want to say to my face, here it is. I'm, say it to me now. I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just saying that it may be better that we get the money first before we start celebrating. Oh. And even then, and even then, you know, we, we, should, we should talk about it. You know, plan. I just want, this is the thing. This is the thing that really irritates me about you. I mean, I, I, I go out there. I'm hustling day in, day out. A man comes back after all this and then you, you are giving me grief? Really? Well, I just need some support. Don't I deserve some support? Serge, Serge, you, you, you do. You deserve all the support and I do support you, but Serge, work with me here. We're drowning, Serge. Leave all this, Serge, you're saying. Ah. What is it now? How much did I even spend? 217. How much is one bottle of Hennessy? I are stressing me like this. I need to spend money to make money. Well, if I go rubbish, you leave. Of course, you are bringing money. Feeling so faded, yeah. That fucking twat, Suji, comes home, and Adiso, the good wife, confronts him about the big withdrawal. He says he spent all that cash hanging with the boys, closing the deal. Then she asks if the deal is done done. What? The way he gets angry and in her face, the way she pulls back kind of fearful as he throws his arms around all up in her face? That's a man to leave. That's a dangerous motherfucker. The way he reverses things so that she's the one who always ends up apologizing? What? This is abuse 101. The closing bit of advice is about how these days everyone is advised to become an entrepreneur, but that may not be for everyone. Here's the direct quote. 
The most popular answer these days to earning more is becoming an entrepreneur. Start your own business. The reality is not everyone's cut out to be a boss. My idea? Find your purpose. Your purpose is the thing that drives you to be successful. Just be sure that your idea solves a problem that people would be willing to pay for. End quote. What's the film's advice? Find your purpose. And make sure you solve a problem that people will be willing to pay for. I can. First of all, I think that whole purpose thing is bullshit. It's also real surprising to see someone who is so critical of religion get taken by this religious lie. Purpose is this thing you're meant to do is ridiculous. Meant to do by whom? Bullshit. Purpose came from this idea that God created you for something in the same way a carpenter made a table for a reason. It has a specific function, a specific purpose. I don't believe human beings have that. And for sure that's critical of religion to then advance this purpose thought is crazy. Human beings are not like chairs that are made for a very specific reason. This is a lie peddled by Rick Warren and co. And used to just make people anxious about finding their purpose. People are so much more than one thing. You can do more than one thing. Then there's this idea of purpose as the thing that drives you to be successful. What the fuck is that even? You know what drives me to be successful in a capitalist society? Staying alive and free from pain. That's what drives me to be whatever the fuck successful means. Keeping myself and my loved ones okay. Period. Then there's this super fucked idea that you should make sure the problem you solve is one that people are willing to pay for. This is beyond outrageous. So there's no money to be made in fixing the problem. Do we then not fix it? This capitalist logic is wicked. It is pure concentrated wickedness and it's counter-revolutionary. It spits in the face of everything it means to be a human being. It spits in the face of all the progress we have made. According to these people, everything we do has to be filtered through the marketplace. We are supposed to value ourselves and everything else based on business and what people are willing to pay for. If there's no money in it, it doesn't matter. Are you kidding me? We're more than the fucking marketplace. We are more. Damn it, we're more. Fuck. That's it for today. I'm out. These people pissed me the fuck off today. Fuck them all. And down with capitalism, capitalists, and capitalist logic. Viva la revolution. Until next time, guys. Who you are? The life. The people. Stay with